Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. These are the Persian Bowmen, who are currently making life very difficult for my troops as they march on their position. I am Marcus Aurelius, and this is Total War Attila, the Eastern Roman Empire and history. And let us continue our battle. Let's take a look at these Persians here. We have Persian scouts, very light melee cavalry. They shouldn't be too much trouble. We have light melee infantry, the Persian Brigade. I don't think they're very good. Armenian Spears, these guys seem pretty tough. They are tier 2. They have a good shield anyway. We have some mercenary steppe raiders, so they have some Huns fighting for them. And then we have Persian Cataphracts, which are probably the toughest cavalry we have to deal with, though I don't think they compare in any reasonable way to our Cataphracts. They don't look like it anyway. And some Persian Mounted Bowmen. So the Persians are incredibly strong with cavalry, and they're incredibly strong with ranged troops. Who's their general? Persian nobles. Yeah, they look pretty tough. And then we have some Persian bowmen, more of them. Dalamite warriors. Medium melee infantry, tier 2. Now these guys seem like they could be pretty tough. Now this is not the actual Sassanids. This is just one of their... Well, not even one of their client kingdoms, one of their allies. So it's interesting to see how how things will go here. Now, my cavalry can't really be used in too many situations here. They have this entrance guarded by the Armenian spears. What I'm going to do... And remember, it's, it's worth remembering that our cataphracts are shock cavalry. So they are not particularly good in the melee fighting. You want to hit somebody hard with them and then have them leave. So, all right. So we just need to advance. And let's advance in two ranks. Let's bring up the Comatatensis as well. So they can fire their Plumbata. Wish we were able to take care of that tower, but can't do everything. Okay, I don't want you guys to get ahead of the Spearmen, though. We're weathering the Arrow Storm pretty well. And as we move closer, I love it how they're still guarding the, the entrance, even though... Oh, whoops, I moved back to Spearmen. That was not what I was supposed to do. We threw our Plumbata, then let's just take them out. We're just better troops, let's just attack. And then as soon as they're engaged, hopefully we'll be able to hit them in the back with our cavalry. General, where are you? There you are. Let's just stay out of range of that tower. They're already surrounding us with cavalry. They're just trying to overwhelm us with numbers. This could end up actually really bad. There's not much we can do tactically. Although now, they're leaving their back open. So let's position our cataphracts. Try to take out their swordsmen. Oh good, this is their strongest swordsman group. That'll help us quite a bit. Alright, engage. And you guys, actually, let's... Let's not engage. Let's go over here and back these guys up. They're already starting to flee. That's excellent. We'll get you guys involved. Why not? Alright, they're not done yet, though. Move forward. Alright, here we go. Let's see what a cataphract charge looks like. General's just hanging out. They're going to regroup. Let's hit them with those guys. Alright, here we are. 
They look pretty cool. Not the same cataphracts as later Roman periods, but oof. Nice charge. Alright, but the thing is now, now that they've done their charge, they need to get out of there. Because they are not really set for sustained attack. But we have another group coming in. Alright. I've been neglecting these guys. Let's move them up. Let's actually move these guys over to try to capture this tower so it doesn't continually hit us. And we'll move the archers up too, just in case we need some backup melee. Our cavalry was enough to take these guys out. So we can, now we can bring these spearmen back into the fight against these spearmen. And we really take these guys out. Good. Well, they haven't been completely taken out, but... Although we are being attacked by the tower, that's really difficult. Our cataphracts, as you see, are pretty tough. They managed to survive when fleeing. These guys have had enough. There's their general. Let's see if we can get these guys from behind. Get our cataphracts up here. They're not done yet. No, they are not done. Uh, no, I don't like this very wide line of cavalry here. Come on, guys. Oh, I wasn't using my cataphractari in that second charge. Oh, this is... These guys are fools. This is beautiful. They are just leaving their ranged troops open to me. Excellent. Archers. Get involved. You still have arrows. What? Oh, these three are good. Take out the general. Honestly, it was just quality of troops that won this battle. Not not quality of generaling. What are you... Come on. Come on, take out the general. Yeah, it does. Those towers, though. Ugh. Excellent. Praise the gods. Your victory is moments away. Well, let's ensure it. No, that's only four. Eight. Twenty-one. Take those guys out. How many are there here? 66. Yep, definitely take those guys out. The problem is this tower is still firing at us while I'm chasing these guys down. Yeah. Forget about it. Let's just end the battle. So the wedding of Galapacidia and Atolf, the leader of the Visigoths, was not, as you can imagine, attended by Honorius. It was not officially sanctioned by the Roman government. Although... Part of the reason why they did it, the Visigoths, or at least Atolf, was that he could hopefully be seen as more legitimate in the eyes of the Romans. You have further orders? Would that I were Excellent. Alright, so we can actually probably take this city now. Ready for battle. He's respectful and popular. Excellent. Improves integrity. Public order? Oh, I love it. That's a great skill. I'm Flavius Timasius. I'm popular. I've got a legionary Patera. I'm popular. Let's see. Upkeep costs down. Recruitment costs down. Recruitment costs from mercenaries down. That's pretty good too. Upkeep for mercenaries. Morale plus 10. Now we'll go with that. And you are a fatigue rate for ranged infantry. That's not that useful. Authority plus 2 when leading an army. Personal influence. Yeah, let's give him that instead. Is he in our family? I always forget which ones we adopted and which ones we didn't. I wish it would say somewhere. He is, however, flaccid. <laughs> that stinks. Do I want more influence for him? I don't know. 
So let's just go with this to give us better melee defense and some better cavalry since we have a lot of those. All right, good. Let's finish off these guys. Nice. So the question is, how did Gala Placidia feel about this wedding? Was she coerced into it as a prisoner of the Visigoths? Was she forced to do it? Or could there have possibly been some love there? Or could she have just been in favor of it for purely political reasons and for the benefit of her children? Honestly, we don't know. All right, let's give these guys tradition. What is this? It's a little wolf. I guess that's pretty cool. Integrity and replenishment. That's the general way I like to start these things. And now that is impossible. we are on our way. Next turn, we will take this city away from them. And it will be a good day to be Roman. We are replenishing. Excellent. This guy's definitely going to stay here. This guy's going to stay here. We're going to continue marching. Forced marching across Africa. He moves very slowly. I think if I have to quickly get him back to the east, I'm going to have him take a boat instead. And you, sir. Can you... You can only hire... Oh, you're in forced march. That's why. Let's get you in standard. Can you recruit another cataphract? You certainly can. All right, good. It's a good life. It's a good life recruiting cataphracts. Okay. And you are still recruiting. In two turns, you'll have some more boats. The Western Romans seem to be doing okay. Here's their leader. Who we cannot see, even though we're allies. And Milan has fallen to the Separatists. So I believe their capital should be Ravenna. Yes, it is. And that's actually a good thing, because it means that we can now trade once again. So let's On behalf of the Emperor, do that. Welcome. Speak, friend. All right, that'll be a lot of money added to our pool. So that's excellent. Now, Illyria. Will you trade with me? Now, let's give it another turn. They're still kind of unfriendly with us. Oh, yeah, income of 10,000. Losing trade with the West was such a horrible, horrible event. All right. Oh, Flavius Abundababa. You are the governor of Thrace. Your public order is already maxed out. Let's max out corruption. Or, I'm sorry, let's max out the reduction of corruption. Construction costs down. Campaign spotting chance. That's useless to me. Recruitment cost. You're not going to be recruiting. Research rate. Definitely a good thing. All right. And you are the governor of Egypt. Oh, yeah. You're our new governor. Let's give you some stuff for you. Wealth. Definitely. Wealth from... Immigration and industrial buildings, okay. And that isn't anything here. So let's go some more wealth. Or, or instead, shoot. There we go. Let's go instead with public order for right now. Since you can never have enough public order. All right. So at this point, needing food that the Romans would not trade with them because they needed food as well, the Visigoths moved, or I should say migrated en masse, to Barcelona, Spain, where Placidia and Atalf, they had a son. The son's name was Theodosius. He was born in 414, but less than a year later, unfortunately, he died 
and with him died any hope of a Romano-Visigothic royal line because less than a year after Theodosius the baby died, Atolf was assassinated by Visigoths who were not on the same page as him with regards to the relationship with the Romans. At that point, there was a bit of a crisis where the person who usurped Atolf was usurped himself because he was kind of a jerk, and Placidia was traded back to her brother Honorius and the Romans in return for Federati status and peace with the Romans. So once again, after five years with the Visigoths as a prisoner and then a bride, Placidia was returned to her brother and was once again with the Romans. Okay, we have an illegitimate son. We'll gain 2,000 gold by taking out the fleet of Axum? Oh, believe me. I wish I could. I just don't have a fleet here to do anything about them. I guess I could create a fleet, but I'd rather spend the money on other things. And now I'm getting a great amount of money, so that is fantastic. Bithynia is still really pissy. They probably will be for their three turns. This would actually make things worse. I don't want to upgrade to an aqueduct because, again, we're not going to be able to keep them in the long term. Upgrading these two will increase public order. And we're running low on food consumption, though. Or food... The amount of food that we have. Which one is most... Nicomedia is pretty safe. Sinope is the one that's most threatened. So we'll upgrade this. And we need to have more food. So these wheat fields are going to be expanded. How much would it cost to convert some sheep to wheat? We can't even do that. Okay, so once we've built sheep, you have to disband them down. You can't just automatically convert them over to wheat fields. That's a problem. That is actually quite a problem. And we can't yet improve our fishing because we haven't researched the tech yet. We actually have a amphitheater here. That's really interesting. Alright, so where else can we get food from? We can get food from Alexandria. Wheat mills. And Baroness? You are now officially fields. Okay, and we are out of money. Oh, that's terrible. That, that money went fast. I haven't seen Macedonia in a while. Oh, shoot. Good thing I checked, because we had to repair from all that damage. And now we're completely out of money. Okay. You need to keep going to this army. And, oh, great. We're suffering from attrition. We need to fortify. And there goes the attrition. That loses us a turn, but it's better than losing men. You're fine where you are, so are you. Rufinus has his new ships, and it looks like the Picts abandoned this city, so let's, we can go and raid it again. Who's this? The Alamans. Okay. They're apparently our enemies, because it doesn't tell me attacking foreign assets is an act of war. Carthage is about to fall. The Picts are attacking Lepsis Magna. They're welcome to it. I should make a fast strike on Garama. That would be... That's the closest city that we could take. Are the Garamontians... I'm sure I'm at peace with them, though. We're not at war. The question is... I mean, there's no benefit to me in defeating the Picts. It just lets this land stay in the hands of the West. Is there a road? There's a road from here to here. It might be simpler to come here and avoid attrition and then come down here. Let's do that. 
All right. That's pretty good there. Arcadius is keeping things going here in Romula, although not enough. As you can see it's still going down negative one. And we have two construction sites that we can't afford anything. At least the holy ground is gone now. But we need to start building something to make these people happy. Because apparently Arcadius just hanging out is not enough. How much are we getting from them in tax? 150? We don't need that. That should make them a bit happier. Now they're getting slightly happier. Okay, good. Ready for orders. All right, here's this guy. And they have taken Salona, which means they have given Salona to us. Another giant group of these guys. What stance are you in? Commander. Are there any mercenaries? We might want some mercenary cavalry. So let's step over into our territory. And we'll hang out here. Actually, let's move into a... Should I do an ambush stance? No campaign movement disabled. You know what? We're just going to stay in the stance that we are because I want to be able to move quickly. How can I serve the people of Rome? March. You can just do your thing here. You have further orders? At your command. Yep, you're just staying there. Commander. Which leaves us with this guy. I will journey to the ends of the world for Rome. At once. All right. Anything else going on? Let's just take a quick look at... Ethiopia is still in bad shape. It's worth a lot to us, though. So I don't want to... have a problem with it. Magna Graeca is worth nothing. Syracuse isn't worth anything to us at all? That's terrible. Even our fruit orchard? Ah, it just gives us food. Alright, so... Cilicia is happy again. And it's also making us a ton of money, so really we just have to worry about Cappadocia and Thinia. Which we're working on. So now that Cilicia is happy... I wonder if we should move him up here. And now they're unhappy again. So basically he was the only reason why they were happy. Okay, good. We'll just have to upgrade these, these cities. And we'll have to upgrade this to an herb. So, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, next turn, we are going to continue to invest in our infrastructure now that we are earning substantially more money because trade has resumed with the West. We are going to fight a rather large battle against the Quadians, and we're going to take Salona for the glory of the Eastern Roman Empire. And we're also going to, over here, attempt to take Mitsheka, Mich <laughs> also for the glory of the Eastern Roman Empire. And then we have our buddies, the Lazicans, who haven't done crap for us, but they hopefully will at least keep this area locked down in the event of a war at some point with the Sassanids. So once again, I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.